So there's a there's a great big difference between macro and micro elements. Um, when it comes to you know what they do, it <clears throat> seems like micro elements um, do a lot more than what macro elements. So um, you know, so we always want to make sure that our, our micro elements are what we need them to be. Um, looking at the chart, okay, where I like to see the level is you see where the copper is, you see where the zinc is, and even the phosphorus. You know, the CU, the ZN, and the PA right there, um, number five, six, and seven bars. Um, one second, the phosphorus? Yeah, the phosphorus is P. I'm seeing nutritional elements, toxic elements, additional elements. Right, in the nutritional, I'm talking about the nutritional elements right now. Okay, and you're saying, oh, okay, okay, I see, okay, phosphorus, got it, yes. Okay, but, but the two other ones to the left as well, the, the CU is copper, the ZN is zinc. <clears throat> now you can see how those are just above the halfway, um, halfway line in the reference interval. Yeah. That's where we like to see, that's going to put you at a more optimal level. Okay, so let's look. Let's look at the iron, the Fe, just to the right of the phosphorus. Now you see that the iron is at 0.8, so it's in the reference interval, but in reality it is by no means uh, anywhere near an optimal level. Okay. 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 Now the other thing that's really important when we look at it <clears throat> is that every one of these elements have a very dynamic relationship with at least 15, 20, or more other essential nutrients, which includes your amino acids, your fatty acids, your vitamins, as well as a lot of these other minerals. Okay, and that's going to be both from a direct and an indirect relationship. Okay, so let's just take, for example, let's just look at calcium here real quick. Okay. Because calcium is going to have a real close relationship with zinc, with iron, phosphorus, manganese, magnesium, potassium, sodium, vitamin D, E, B12, and it, as you can see, it just goes. There's there's a good list that goes on. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that that holds true of every one of these elements. Okay, um, so whenever we're working to adjust your biochemistry is that it does require amino acids, vitamins, and sometimes fatty acids in order to um, get these minerals to be able to adjust them, okay? Um, you don't have any of these bars that are up on the high side, okay? But keep in mind that a hair analysis is a cellular analysis. It's a, it's a tissue biopsy. It's not going to compare to a serum or blood test for minerals. Okay. Several reasons for that is that this is looking at things from the cell level. Okay. Just because something's floating around in the bloodstream doesn't mean that it's getting inside the cell. Okay. Okay. And then the other thing is that when we look at other nutrients like potassium, is mostly intracellular. Most of the potassium in your body is inside the cell. Okay, most of your sodium is outside the cell. All right, so um, then we can look at things like calcium. Calcium is required, I mean, it's important for, the, for your heartbeat and everything, you know, synaptic connections, and it's used everywhere in your body. Okay, but Doing a serum analysis on calcium, the body will eat the bones until they look like Swiss cheese because it has to maintain a certain level of calcium in the blood. Whereas a cellular analysis, we're not looking at that. Okay, so we're not subject to, to what they call homeostasis. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So um, any any questions here on the on, on the nutritional elements? 
So the B and C O I have none. So is that something that I need? Uh, the B boron is that that's an additional charge. Okay, it's an additional cost. Okay, the C O is uh, cobalt. Cobalt is the corn ring in vitamin B12. Okay, so from this analysis here is that um, you know that would that would indicate to us that your vitamin B12 is low. Okay. Okay. Now there's a reason. There's there's a reason for that. Okay. Is that also is that when we're looking at like you see the Na in the nutritional elements over there, the Na the third bar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that when we look at sodium, sodium chloride, okay, chloride is absolutely essential for the parietal cells in the stomach to produce hydrochloric acid. Okay. <laughs> and so when you're low, what it's indicating to us is that your stomach is probably too alkaline. Okay. okay. So now you don't drink alkaline water and do all that kind of stuff, do you? No. Good. Okay. Don't do that, okay. Um, now, here's the other thing, is that we just looked at your cobalt. Vitamin, vitamin B12 <laughs> is very difficult for the body to um, digest and absorb, okay? It, it's what's, it requires what they call the intrinsic factor in the stomach in order to get vitamin B12 through in order to get it absorbed into the body. So that's another indicator to us that the stomach is probably too alkaline. Okay? Okay. okay. So any um, any other questions on any questions at all on here? So when somebody's stomach is too alkaline, what are some common things they do to make it non alkaline? Um, normally the easiest thing to do is like the, you've seen in the supplement recommendations where we have HCLV plus, back on the very back page, on the last page of your report, where it said 30 day, 60 day, 90 day program, 120 day, but you'll see we have, we have hydrochloride, uh, betaine hydrochloride recommending for you. That's the, that's the most simple way to assist the stomach. Okay. 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 Yeah. I mean, you can, you know, you can use things like bitters and, and some apple cider vinegar and, you know, there's other, there's other means, but the easiest way to do it is just to have it right there in tablet form and then, uh, you know, you just, you just take the HCL there when you get ready to eat and then that way there you've got it, you know, it's the easy way to do it. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, the, any other questions on here on the nutritional elements? Um, no. And well, if you, if something pops up when we're talking, we'll come right back to it. So feel free to ask anytime. Okay. Sure. Um, Let's look at the toxic elements here real quick. Um, you got a few of those showing up, the uranium, the arsenic, and the mercury. Okay. Um, wow. There's a, are you living in Connecticut? No, not anymore. I'm in Arizona. You're in Arizona? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to think, um, wow, how long have you been in Arizona? Let me ask that. Uh, like two months. Okay, so I could have some remnants of uh, where you were at before, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, if I'm looking at remnants, those were really quite heavy. So what, uh, what are these? What are these that are heavy, like uranium, arsenic? Is this like um, like eating fish too much? The, the mercury, like if you're doing a lot of tuna and swordfish and those things, that that could, okay, that could be a very what good What about salmon? 
Not so much in salmon, you know. That it, it's not really. A, but, but, but oh, oh, if you eat, if you're eating the um, farmed salmon, okay, then there would be that potential. But if you're if you're able to stay with the wild caught salmon, I eat only wild caught salmon. You only eat what? I only eat the wild caught. Okay, then. Shouldn't be an issue with the salmon. Hmm. Then what else um, is the spike? Let's say for uranium or arsenic, what do they come from? Uh, now the uranium, um, when you know, when I, when I lived in Las Vegas, um, is very common in the Southwest. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, right. So I, you know, every time I see the uranium, and I got somebody in California. I already know they live in Southern California. Okay, same thing with Arizona, same thing, you know, with Southern Nevada. Okay, and so it's just natural, it's just natural, especially, um, you know, around granite areas, different sands and, and all of those kind of things. So it's just going to be much more natural for your uranium to be high. Now, the other thing is, are you renting or buy if you live in a house or apartment or high rise or what? Yeah, a house. Okay. Now, um, once in a while is that you can have what, you know, the radon gas. Okay. And that will cause your uranium to go up. Okay. Because as the, as the, uh, as uranium decays, Okay, now it's not really that high here at the moment, okay, but um, especially for just, you know, having been there for a couple months. Do you spend a lot of time outdoors? No, I go out like once a month. Okay, all right. Then, um, you know, still if you're breathing the air and, and um, you know, there's going to be other ways that, you know, that it, that it gets in your body. Got it. So, yeah, so as you're living there, we just, you know, you just want to kind of keep an eye on where it goes and um, and then, you know, you can kind of make adjustments, but you don't go outside because, you know, usually a lot of times, like, you know, if you go outside and there's a lot of, you know, you're wearing, you know, short sleeves shirts or, you know, there's a lot of skin exposed, then it'll land on your skin and if it goes on your skin it will go inside your body if you breathe it in it will go inside your body and it's the same thing that you know like the locally grown foods is that it could be in the water it could be in the soil so it's a, it's a natural element to the earth okay <laughs> and so be it and, and, and now that you live down there is that that would be something to watch for the other thing that you can do is that you can have a radon, uh, a radon gas test, okay? Because as uranium decays, then it produces, you know, it, it, it goes into radon. And so the radon can actually increase your uranium. That doesn't happen very often, okay? But every once in a while, they have to come in and do mitigation on the radon in houses and basically all they're doing is going in and, and venting the basement or the crawl space, you know, just to kind of get it out of the, you know, so it's not going up into the living space. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can get those like at Home Depot or Lowe's or you can have somebody come out and test it for you. Okay. You know, just, yeah. So, um, arsenic, um, Hmm. Um, I doubt if you live on a well, you have city water. Yes. Um, yeah, my water is, um, yeah, city water, I guess, like normal water. And then I filter it through a, um, it's like, like two carbon filter. Uh -huh. So I, I, I have that thing. Um, and then that's all I drink. I only drink that filtered water. Um, uh -huh. and there's no other liquid that I drink outside of that. Okay. Okay. Now, here's some other areas that, 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 you know, you can get the arsenic from. Is that if you eat a lot of 
the uh, cruciferous veggies like uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale. Those are known to those, you know, are they, they will really absorb the arsenic out of the soil or out of the irrigation water. Okay, so those are those are if you eat a lot of those, those are good sources that you can potentially get that. Okay, now um, the other places that you know that that make a good potential is that like uh, uh, pesticides, beer table salt, um, pottery glazes, rat poison, um, wood treatments. Back, wood treatments, what I'm talking about there is like the old railroad ties and whatnot that they used to put, uh, they used to put them in creosote, okay, because the creosote had a lot of arsenic in it, but um, they don't use those a whole bunch anymore like they used to put them in, but they actually use them for raised bed gardens and, and uh, playgrounds and that kind of stuff. But other places, is like I'm saying, is that if you're around ant traps, pesticides, um, um, these are the more common areas of where you can be exposed to arsenic. I don't have, um, I don't really drink anything or like I don't think I near pesticides much. Um, also, like I spend most of my I'm in my room where we have this air filter that's running all the time and I don't know if that is also in the air but that's that I don't eat any vegetables um, I only eat sweet potatoes and um, salmon and you know like I don't eat like much veggies or citrus uh, that word you said with the type of vegetables um, so I don't have that um, so I'm not sure exactly where that would be coming from. Is it is it like very high? Is it bad to have it very high? Or well, it, it's, you know, you're nowhere near toxic. Okay, but um, when we when we see them, you know, even if they're up off the top of the chart, all all they're doing is just creating more of a burden on the body. Okay, if you're toxic, you're going to be in an emergency room. Just so you know. Okay, so you're not toxic. But it looks like I'm not too far from toxic, right? Like it's like 42 is where I am at, and toxic is like 49. Excuse me, we got something floating in the air over here. No, it can be way off the top of the chart, and you can be perfectly fine. Okay. Right. Okay, right. If you're toxic, you're going to be dying. Okay, you're not going to be up walking around or talking to me or anybody else. You're going to be on your way to the emergency room at the hospital. Got it. Okay. Um, now, the arsenic, the, now the level of it, is it worth investigating where you're, where you're getting that exposure? Of course it is. Okay, same thing with your mercury. And then to keep an eye on your uranium because you live in an area you know, even though you have filters and whatnot, is that you're still breathing air, okay? And when the wind blows, um, you know, I mean, everything, everything there can can come in, and it's the same thing. Um, even when you're doing sweet potatoes and everything else, it's a matter of where your foods are grown, and if they're going to be grown there locally, you know, anywhere around, then you still have that potential. So if that's one that you can keep your eye on. Okay, um, it's the same thing with arsenic there as well, okay, because water, um, water's, uh, um, and that's why I asked you if you was on well water, because <clears throat> it's like, when you, whenever you put in a well, arsenic seems to be your big problem, you know, it just jumps up about everywhere, okay, but you're not on the well, so, um, the easiest thing to do is this is the one of the times I'll tell you to go on to Google and just Google sources of arsenic. Mm. Okay. Huh? Okay, yes. But that and see because that way I mean that way there you can look at your particular environment and go, Oh, maybe that's where I'm getting it. See what I'm saying? Gotcha. Makes sense. Okay. 
Okay. And then if there's nothing that shows up in that, then what then what a person would what you might really want to do then is that change grocery stores. Go to a different grocery store to buy the food because a lot of the different grocery stores, sure, a lot of them will use the same suppliers, but there's other times like, you know, you may want to go to uh, a Whole Foods or a Trader Joe's or, you know, um, you know, just uh, just a different type of grocery store that could have a different vendor, a supplier that's oh, bringing in that food. See okay. what I'm saying? I'll take a look. I mean, I use Whole Foods mostly right now, but okay, it's not if okay. it's not if it's not the one that's like basically killing me. Then we can move on to see what would be the next thing that's like worth checking out that seems high or unusual. Uh huh. Same thing with mercury. Okay, the mercury. Um, you know, like you're just eating mostly salmon. Okay, and and um. Once again, um, it, you know, a lot of, do you do, uh, do you do herbs? No. Okay, good. <laughs> herbs are a really good source of toxic elements, especially when we import them here. Um, mercury is the same thing. They're going to use that in, in a lot of different vaccines. It, I mean, um, same thing if it's grown in the ground, you have that potential, but, um, here is coming from it could be several different areas okay once again if the foods are treated with let's say mercurial fungicides um different medications like mercurochrome methylate preparation H, even contact lens solution okay can happen um if we're looking at like tattoos um you know the red in the in the tattoo um that's a good source of mercury um, you can get it like in the dental, like in marker um, um, fillings, you know, amalgam fillings. Got it. Okay, right. Now, <clears throat> believe it or not, is that, um, you know, you can get it through felt, you can get it in floor waxes, different adhesive, different fabric softeners. Um, so there's just a lot of different places that, you know, they use it in everything, just so you know. Mercury is just like, I don't know why they do it. I wish I could tell you. You know, I mean, obviously it kills certain things, okay, but I think there's alternatives to that. But we've even had it show up in our drywall. It, they imported a bunch of drywall, and it was loaded with mercury, okay? And so um, I forget what years that was, okay, when we got that. Um, when that got shipped in here, okay, but once again, just take a look at that because I want, I do want you to investigate the sources of both of those. Okay. And as you can see, as you can see, there's a lot of different ways, there's a lot of different areas that you can be exposing yourself to this. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, let's turn the page and I'll come back to the additional elements, but right now let's turn the page. <clears throat> and let's look at the, um, you see the toxic ratios in the middle of the second page of graphs? Yes. Okay. Okay. On this particular graph, we want all those bars to be off the top of the chart for the bed. That's what we want. Okay. As you can see, you only have four of them that actually go off the top of the chart. And so when we look at the ones that are the lowest, we can see it, the lowest ones, okay, is the iron to mercury, selenium to mercury, zinc to mercury, and sulfur to mercury, okay? And so what we're telling you on this particular chart is that your mercury is high enough that it could be, be potentially interfering with the proper metabolism of those different uh, mineral elements those elements, those nutritional elements. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, because <clears throat> the body will actually use, you know, it'll actually use a, um, a toxic element instead of a nutritional element just to stay alive if that's what it needs. 
because the body tries its very best to stay alive. So um, here, and, and that's what I'm saying is that mercury is like the worst toxic element that we can have in the body. Okay, and so it, it, you know I, I want you to go ahead and spend a little bit of time there and see if you can figure out where that exposure is coming from. Do you have fillings in your in, in dental work? Um, I had feelings like when I was a kid, but not any time recently. They're still there? Um, actually I'm not 100% sure. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, if, if they put feelings in when you was a kid, then unless you had them removed, um, they're, they're, they're probably still going to be in there. That by by feelings, real... you're talking about like white, the white gummy thing that they put on your teeth, like when they're drilling in, then they fill it up with the white gum. That's what. It... Oh, okay, okay. You got you didn't get the amalgams. I didn't get the I didn't get the silver. If that's what you're talking yeah. about. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't get those. No. Okay. 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 All right. Um. Then you know, and and, and I. You know, I, I only bring it up, but it, it's not something that I've only seen one person that's ever, you know, been poisoned by the mercury amalgams. Okay, so it's not it's not as real common, you know, as what people think it is. Okay, no, I'm good. Um, so anyway, look for the other sources of where that that will be coming from. Okay. Um, let's go back to the front page here real quick. Let's look at the additional elements in the green on the bottom. Okay, these these elements are under study worldwide. We don't know if they're essential, non-essential, conditional, neutral, toxic. We simply don't know. Okay, um, so we're waiting for more and more information to come in. And like I said, there's kind of countries all over the world that study nutrition. Okay. Um, and, and unlike the nutritional elements, we don't know all of the interrelationships and we're not sure exactly, you know, what they're doing inside the body. Okay. So you don't have anything that's up off the top of the chart. Um, you know, I mean, we have a little bit of like information on, on germanium. Okay. Where, um, you know, we, there's, you know, same thing with your lithium, your lithium looks pretty good. Okay. But, um, but at the same time, um, we're getting a little bit of information. So, you know, if you eat garlic or shiitake mushrooms, onions, those are going to be, those have germanium in it. Okay. But other than that, we look pretty good there. Okay. That's um, interesting because that's exactly a mushroom that I could eat. I could only eat that mushroom for a while, shiitake mushrooms. So. Um, is it good to have that, the level I have it at, at, or that's too much? Um, no, on the germanium, okay, is that you can eat more. I mean, your germanium is low. Oh, okay, the first, yeah, that first one in the additional elements. Okay, so that one is low. So, you know, I mean, if you have some germanium or some shiitake mushrooms there once in a while, feel free. Because it's a good source of germanium. Got it. Okay. Um, going back to the toxic ratios a little bit. You said there's four, okay. but we we talked about um, just mercury, right? But what are the other three? Um, what we're looking at, PB is lead. Okay, and then the CD is cadmium. Okay, so when you look at your front page. Right next to the mercury bar, that's a uh, that's cadmium is below calibration, and your lead is below cal. So we don't have nothing really showing up. See, so that's why that's why the uh, the cadmium and the lead, you know, is, is the iron. Now you remember when I was saying your iron was low yeah. at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, even though you don't have any lead showing up. When you look at the FEPB ratio, the second bar, okay, at 8.0, it's still in the acceptable range, but you cannot reduce your lead. So what does that mean? 
that means your iron has got to come up in order to bring that bar and the toxic ratio up. So if that iron was sitting at the level of where the phosphorus is right next to it, then that bar would be off the top of the chart. Okay. Okay. And cadmium uh, is fine to have it high? See what? You said cadmium is also high, right? No, no, the cadmium, there, there is no cadmium. Just like your lead, there's no cadmium showing up. So what's Zn? What is the what? It's a Zn slash Cd, so that's like a... Yeah, that, that, that's the zinc cadmium ratio. There's no cadmium, there's no cadmium showing up, so it's not going to have any effect on your zinc. Okay, so I'm trying to understand, like, why is the bar showing so high then? What is it that I have high? Because, because the bar is high, that's what we want. That's telling us that that toxic element is not interfering with that nutritional element. That's what we want. We don't want no toxic element interfering with our nutritional elements. So all of the ones that are low, okay, is where mercury can be interfering with the metabolism of your iron and causing problems at, you know, different metabolic pathways that require iron. Same thing with your selenium. So I get it. Okay. On this on this toxic ratios chart, the ones to maybe look into is the ones that are low. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. We want them to be high and off the top of the chart. That's what we want. So right now I'm low on Fe is iron as you mentioned and and then also Se and then zinc and something else. Yeah, and the sulfur. Okay. And so and so when we when we're looking at it because this is this is all the mercury. This is what the mercury is interfering with the iron, the mercury is interfering with the selenium. The mercury is interfering with the zinc, and the mercury is interfering with the sulfur. Okay, and so when we're looking, when we look at the front page, is that look at the zinc level. Okay, that was one of the first ones that I called out. You know, are you on the front page? Yeah. Okay, you see the ZN there, it's at 17. Well, your zinc level is right where I want to see it. Okay. It, the problem here is, is that the mercury level is way too high. We don't want you to increase your zinc. We want you to decrease your mercury. Okay, so here's a question. Um, okay. You mentioned if I'm eating wild caught, it's fine, which I'm eating, but I eat about 35 servings a week. Oh, okay. Um, so that that in that case it could be still even if it's wild caught it still could be high right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, okay. That's good to know. I'm just making sure. I mean, um, yes. Because yes. I I didn't mention this before, but I have like an autoimmune condition where I can only eat salmon. I actually can't tolerate any other food except I only eat salmon and sweet potatoes, and um, Himalayan uh, pink salt. These are the three things I can eat. And so that explains it, but I can't really help it much um, other than the other things you mentioned, like take shiitake mushrooms, which I think I should be able to tolerate. I haven't tried it individually. I only tried shiitake mushrooms last time with the soup, but I no longer can have the soup either because um, my body's reacting to all foods. But the only thing I can eat is the salmon, which is why I have it about five to seven times per day in small meals broken down. So what I would have to look into is within wild caught salmon, is there ones that have lower mercury or something? I would really check into it because <clears throat> here's the problem is that just because they're saying something is wild caught, it doesn't mean that there wasn't some kind of farming or some kind of food. You know, it's like a farm fish and they're and they're putting in all the different pellets and whatnot to feed them. Okay. Um, 
So just because something says organic, people are very misled by all these all these uh, different claims. Okay, because even if you look at the um, if you look at the, the the FDA, and when they talk about organic, there's different levels of organic. But for a farmer to actually grow a crop in a true organic nature and use no pesticides or anything, period, is that you're going to spend twenty-five to thirty dollars for one tomato because there, there's going to be no yield. You cannot grow a whole bunch of food without use because it's like Carol's uh, ex-brother-in-law right there in Arizona, and he, you know, he has one of the, you know, he raises like five acres of you pick vegetables. Okay, people drive from Phoenix over there to to pick his vegetables. So he's trying to do everything organic. So I walk over there one day, and I said. What are all these chemical barrels doing here? You know, you're doing everything organic. And said Alan, he said there there are certain things that he said I, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't have enough tomatoes for anybody to pick. One car would come up here and pick every tomato that I had because there, 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 you know. <clears throat> and so what I'm saying here is that. Um, even the government says, oh, well, if it's certified organic, it doesn't mean that it's, that it's pure, okay? It just means it has less chemicals than the next level up. See what I'm saying? So what would you, if I had to ask you, like, where would you um, recommend looking if, like, right now I'm getting wild-caught salmon from Whole Foods, and uh-huh. that's the only, like, really the only source that I thought would be the best for that. Um, if I can only keep eating salmon, which i that's my only option, where would uh, I go next, in your opinion, to get salmon that's even less mercury? I think, I think that um, in, in your situation is that I would really try to go much more direct. You're going to have to do a little research on this, even though... Um, even though I used to live in Oregon and up in the Pacific Northwest, and obviously there's a lot of salmon up in the Pacific Northwest, okay? What I would do in your particular situation is that I would look at contacting some of the, uh, the uh, fish co-ops on the coast, okay? That, you know, where the fishermen are going to come in and break, you know, the commercial fishermen. Mm-hmm. Where they come in and they bring their product, okay. Now you you probably go all the way to Alaska on it, okay. And so what I would do is um, if you could get a hold of those co-ops, okay. And you know, because most people, you know, it's just like myself. You know, it's like if you were to call me and I was I was the head of a co-op, working on you know, a manager at the co-op, and you said, hey. I've got a real autoimmune problem. I'm only able to eat salmon, but all of a sudden I seem to be getting some toxic elements and I would like to, you know, to get something, even, you know, something that I know is is a fresh cot and, and no farming whatsoever. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I would, because you, you know, you're in a very peculiar situation here. Right. Okay, and so, and it is important, okay, because even when we're, when we're looking at your toxic ratios, and we can see the effect that it's having on your zinc, okay, because we look at the zinc copper ratio, we look at how the immune systems are functioning, both in the cellular immune response and the humoral immune response. Okay, zinc, as as you know, is antiviral. Okay, and copper is antibacterial, right? Okay. Okay, and so what we're looking at is that even though your zinc level is up there where we like to see it, 
your zinc copper ratio on the significant ratios look very good okay but when we come down and we start looking at the zinc mercury ratio is that <clears throat> that zinc may not be functioning in your immune system quite the way it should see what i'm saying mm. got it okay and so for the condition i mean you know i'm not an md but but but, but, but for the condition that you're dealing with is that you know i can pretty much say that that mercury is not helping your situation at all with your with your autoimmune got it okay okay um very very important for you to go ahead and and make them phone calls it's going to be worth your time because that is an extremely limited um you know amount of foods that you're eating yeah yeah i'm doing other stuff to try to come to a solution but um yeah i'll i'll add this definitely to the list to just call directly to the closest source that actually fishes this salmon near us and see if i can have a some kind of relationship with them to get um, a weekly shipment to come in directly right Absolutely. You know, because um, I remember when I was in the Coast Guard, okay, um, you know, obviously, you know, um, we have to go out and tow in fishing boats and all of that, but, you know, there's all of these different fishermen co-ops and all that, so when the fishermen are coming out and they're just, they're, they, they pull the boats right in and they're unloading right into the, into the co-op, okay, so everything coming in off the boat is about as good as you're going to get even though there is pollution in the ocean okay but but not near as much you know as compared to what we deal with on the on the land nowadays so that's going to be your best bet on uh, you know yeah especially when you're with your with your immune and, and and the nice thing is is that they seem to be that's a science that seems to be coming along really really well now okay is the, the you know immunology okay they're making some pretty good breakthroughs on a lot of different things you know what do you mean where would you say that i could look that you know on this kind of studies they're doing a lot of good work to look at where what was your question again like you said they're doing a lot of good studies with immunology um oh that's just like that's just like with your you know with your doctor you know i mean the different you know the different folks that are in the field okay, okay so okay. if you go see an immunologist okay then you know um, they're going to know about all the different advancements i was talking to a friend of mine here in georgia and his young son 12 years old he had that peanut allergy where it would kill him if he ate a peanut from shock Hmm. And so, anyway, you know, he's been, he, he was taking his son to one of the immunologists here in Athens, and lo and behold, his son is now able to eat peanuts and peanut butter. And he was telling me that his son absolutely loves peanut butter, but before it would have killed him if he had even taken up as much as a bite of peanut butter. And so, when you're looking at the science of of immunology that's what i'm saying is that there's they're starting to make a lot of advancements there and so you know whatever it is that that autoimmune that you're dealing with is you know um don't give up is really what i'm telling you because right. of the advancements that they're making but from a nutritional standpoint <clears throat> you know you want to do what it is that you can right right no for sure exactly okay and so um yeah and especially with the with the zinc mercury ratio and your your immune systems okay um so we we normally associate zinc with the cellular immune response got it okay and that's that's obviously the side that um for the t lymphocytes and all of that kind of stuff okay so um 
you know, I'm not, you know, I don't know what, you know, what you're dealing with, but that's normally, from a nutritional standpoint, that's, that's the way we look at those. It's definitely antiviral. They were telling everybody the truth, but like I said, zinc, uh, copper is antibacterial. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. I'm going to work on, I think that's the most important thing. I'm just going to work on this one thing and then I'll probably get another test done after I can come to a solution with this, maybe in the next three, four months later, um, if I get a get a yes. direct source. Yes, that would, that I would recommend that wholeheartedly because okay. that, in the condition of what it is that you're talking, what you're dealing with, it, it seems to me that, that that would be time and energy very well spent. For sure. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a good afternoon. And if you get any questions, feel free to give Carol a call. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Okay. okay bye. All right. So that's kind of nice. I mean, I wasn't really honestly expecting any kind of info that's going to be any kind of uh, signs from this because it just seemed not sure like it was just almost like recommended by the doctor as a side thing but you know there's no surprise like, you know it's all i eat and fish is known for mercury so that is that